Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Hillsborough United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Ben Hanna. It is a joy to have you with us in worship this morning. A few announcements as we begin. Uh, first is that uh, there is a liturgist sign up on the back table as you exit. Uh, if you've not seen our really faithful and wonderful regulars on liturgists, you should have already realized that uh, diversity in voices and experience and, I mean, quality, honestly, I'm terrible most of the time. And these guys and ladies bring up our quality of worship here in our service time together. And there's space for you. Uh, we have a slot waiting in September that still needs a sign up and then we're signing up folks in uh, what like October and beyond and if you've always wondered could I even do that Doug oh no uh, sorry I was teasing Doug earlier today about this if you've ever wondered could I do that the answer is yes is not do you read all of the words perfectly the question is are you willing to offer a little bit of the love that God has given you in service to our brothers and sisters as we worship God together in other words the willingness to do it is the most important part so if you would like to give it a shot and you've got questions for me you can either sign up or you can email the officer you can come by and harass me I'll make it really easy for you, I promise. Are there other announcements as we begin worship this morning? Excellent, thank you. Uh, we have our regular uh, additions and corrections. There's some... Jonathan, it's an, uh, I look pretty tired, but at least it's accurate. Uh, there's a picture of me you can add into, uh, into the book along with all the other additions as well. And those are out, those will be in the narthex as you leave. Other announcements? If not, then as we enter into this moment in which we can lift our praise and thanks to God, I invite you to stand with me and join in our first hymn, this is the Spirit's entry now. that as I come to look at what I'm to read this morning that I can apply something to either something that happened in the past week or something that's uh, maybe going to happen in the future and as I read through this this morning I what, what what came to me was the phrase just get over it or just move on and I've had I had just some and we, I think we all have those things where we get hung up on things that in the end and the big picture are really about this big but we want to make them this big. Hmm. Uh, and that's what this, this reading from Ephesians kind of spoke to me. So uh, the Apostle Paul gives us this snapshot of what he believes the Christian life to look like. Listen in a new way through the common English translation. Therefore, after you have gotten rid of lying, each of you must tell the truth to your neighbor because we are parts of each other in the same body. Be angry without sinning. 
Don't let the sun set on your anger. Don't provide an opportunity for the devil. Thieves should no longer steal. Instead, they should go to work, using their hands to do good so that they will have something to share with whoever is in need. Don't let any foul words come out of your mouth. Sorry. <laughs> Only say what is helpful when it is needed for the building up of the community so that it benefits those who hear what you say. evil be kind compassionate and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ therefore imitate God like dearly loved children live your life with love following the example of Christ who loved us and gave himself for us he was a sacrificial offering that smelled sweet to God let us join together now in the confession and pardon as seen upon the screen. Let us confess our lives to the Lord, who answers with grace and mercy. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you, you are, are the way to peace. peace. Come, Come into, into the, the brokenness, brokenness of, of our lives and our, and our land, land with, with your, your healing, healing love. love. Help, Help us to be willing to bow before you in true repentance and bow, and bow to, to one, one another in real forgiveness. forgiveness. By the, By the fire, fire of, of your, your Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, melt our hard hearts, hearts and consume the pride and prejudice which separates us. us. Fill us, Fill us O Lord, Lord, with your, your perfect, perfect love, love, which casts out fear and binds us together in that, in that unity which you share with, with the Father and the and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, Christ we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Our gospel this morning is taken from the evangelist John. Please stand and lift your hearts as we hear the gospel. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am, the bread of, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we knew? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and, and they shall all from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has, e whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Please be seated. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, grant that these words that we share and these thoughts that we hold may be good and useful and acceptable in your sight. For you, O oh Lord, you are our rock, and you are our strength, and you are our I suspect like many of you, I was given a piece of advice, or depending on the moment, perhaps a commandment from my parents. I think more precisely my mother when I was young. And it went something a little bit like this. Benjamin, if you can't say anything nice, good, at least we're all in the same boat. 
Now this, I am not entirely clear. I don't really know how far the widespread application of that phrase expands geographically, having known and uh, been amongst people who come from say like New York City or Boston, I'm not sure that they were taught this same rule. Um, they at least don't seem to follow it in the same way that I'm used to hearing it followed here in the Midwest, which is to say we can be very quiet people. And sometimes I wonder, what exactly does that mean? Maybe it means that we just aren't very talkative. And for many of us, probably right now, you're wishing I was in this camp. Some of some people just are not very talkative. However, I wonder if particularly someone who has grown up my entire life here in this Midwest area where we prize niceness or at least the appearance of niceness or at least the appearance that we will tolerate one another for just a little bit. Perhaps there's something more that we can be living into. Perhaps Christ has indeed called us forward, not just into niceness, but perhaps into love. And the reason I know that is, as Paul writes to the, his, uh, this letter to the church at Ephesus, he makes it clear that there are, in fact, two distinct steps, if you will. It says, now that you've gotten rid of lying, you must tell the truth. Notice it's not, get rid of lying, stop. It's, you get rid of lying, and then you have to choose to tell the truth. There is a pretty wide gray area in there that I think I was taught to inhabit. Well, you can get rid of lying, and that's good enough, right? As long as you're not lying to people, you are following God's wishes. But Paul makes it clear, stopping lying is the first step. By the love and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we are called to not only step away from lying, but to move towards the uh, really challenging step of actually telling other people the truth. And it doesn't stop there, right? Not just don't be hateful, but be loving. Not just stop stealing, but instead use the gifts of your life to build up the world around you instead of taking from it. Not just stopping swearing. I mean, you self-incriminated. <laughs> but transition from just not doing the bad thing into turning turning your words into gifts of love that build up those around you, right? My mother, despite her best intentions and her own inherited knowledge, life is encapsulated in this gray space of simply not doing harm to one another. But I fear daily that creates is this wide gray area where we don't say anything at all. The silence of Christian witness happens so often in my own life because I've moved away from the bad. I don't, I'm sorry, I'm going to switch it. You're not the bad side, I promise. We move away from the bad, but we aren't seeking to move towards the good. Because doing the good thing requires to turn to my neighbor and tell them the truth about a dispute that we've had or an argument that's going on or the differences between us. It's not easy to tell someone that you think differently from them and yet you still care about them. Because if you tell someone what you really believe, they might reject you. If you tell someone what you really want, they might say no, and so we stay silent. We don't lie, 
but we don't tell the truth either. And I don't think there's a lot of theft amongst all of you. Um, no, I don't think so. But we turn aside from the theft, but we haven't all turned the works of our hands towards the building up of our communities. We turn aside from hatred, but love asks us to love everybody, even our enemies, even the people who ask of us forcefully to do work for them, who strike us and hate us and say all sorts of evil things about us. Jesus says, love them. Well, that makes me uncomfortable. So instead, I'll stay here in this nice lukewarm area where I won't hate you, but I don't love you either, at least not in any way that you would know. We see this reflected in the history of the Methodist Church in the works of John Wesley, in which he, he outlines three simple rules, three basic rules of how his societies functioned way back 200 and some odd years ago. The first rule was, do no harm, right? Sounds like Paul. Stop lying, stop using foul language, stop hating, stop bitterness, anger, slander, and all other types of, uh, types of evils. Do no harm. Raised, stay in love with God. Prayer, worship, reading scripture, being in community with one another. These were the simple rules that Wesley wanted his Methodists to follow in, in living out their Christian life. And, and again, what he found and what I find in my own life is it's really easy to put away the harm. But I'm awfully busy and I'm awfully stressed, and I'm awfully tired, and sometimes it's just a little too much to start doing good. But if you wonder, how is it that Paul knows this? How is it that Paul knows that this is the point of Christian faith? It's found within this passage from the Gospel of John that Rod read for us. And it's maybe the least noticed section of this longer part of chapter 6 in which Jesus has multiplied the loaves and the fish and he's talked about himself as the bread of life. But there's a very important line. He says, no one can come to me unless drawn by the Father. Let that just sink in for just a moment. Nobody can come to Christ unless they have been drawn by the Father. Way too often. Way too often. We treat each other like non-combatants in a cold war. We're trying to find the edge on the other church in town or the other denomination or we're trying to split ourselves internally about what I believe versus what you believe versus what, quote unquote, the Bible believes. We are willing to find division everywhere. But Jesus lays it out clearly. If you have come to Christ, if you have faith, to Christ, they have come to Christ because God the Father has drawn them and us and everybody. In fact, I believe that God wants to draw everybody to Jesus Christ. I believe that God is in fact wooing every single person that we come across each and every day. God wants that person to know the love of Jesus and is trying to draw them 
closer and closer. Just like God is trying to draw me closer and closer. The question then becomes, as these people who have not yet found themselves in a place where they can accept Jesus but are still being wooed, attracted, drawn in by the God of creation, what is our role to play? And this is where the silence comes into play. We put aside the bad. The words of injury and hardship. But as long as we live in that gray, comfortable space where as long as we're not hurting anybody, we're just, we're just doing fine. We are not speaking. Sure, we're not lying to our neighbors, but we're not telling them the truth either. Sure, we're not hating that person, but we're not loving them. We are called to use our words as part of God's will to draw everybody to Jesus Christ. But if you can't use your words, we are at least called to use our actions. What I believe God wants from us, what I believe we have been formed and called as a community of faith to do is to be people for when we travel in our communities and in our work and in our play and some other city that wherever we have passed, the actions of our lives have not been silent. That they have spoken of the love, the expansive love of a God who wants each and every person to know the love of Jesus. So not that we go unnoticed and silent as Christians, but that our love speaks powerfully by our willingness to forgive, by our ability to offer love, by our desires to put away our divisions and our shouting and our anger. As Paul would say, to be kind, to be compassionate actively, to actively forgive one another, and most, of, most above, or above all, loved children. Drawn by God into relationship with Jesus Christ so that we can stay silent. We were drawn into the love of Christ so that our words can join with the song of hope and forgiveness and life eternal that is the song of God's infinite mercy. So, apologies to my mother. And your mothers, probably. And your mothers, 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 fathers, mothers, mothers. Perhaps it's time to put away the silence. And let not only our words speak powerfully about the love of God, but to allow our actions to do the same. To move away from the comfortable gray area and into God's light, into God's hope, and into the love of a God who's still calling, still Time to stop being silent. Amen. As we reflect upon God's love and will for, for our lives, let us stand together and affirm our faith 
Please join me as we read together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick. Saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. You may have noticed that there's some gift bags up here. At first I thought it was just a very late uh, baby shower for Jonathan uh, earlier this week, but I have since been informed that these bags were collected by our kids club and we have more information. There you are. Come on up. Huh? Oh, well, I mean, listen, you know, surprises are good things. Um, when you club and uh, use the mic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I like my voice. <laughs> I like your voice too. That's why we need to make it louder. Okay. Plus, can hey, now me? that you can do that, maybe you'll be a liturgist. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kids Club has been studying this last month about promises that God has kept with Moses or with uh, Abraham and Sarah. And so our uh, last promise that God kept to Abraham and Sarah was to bestow a son on them. And so one of our, uh, we have a key ring and we are earning little, what they call keys to go on to our key rings is to um, have different services to different community different uh, or to God to Jesus to friends and one of our keys was to make up baby gifts and take them to the appropriate uh, organization to be able to hand them out to those newborn parents and so the kids had a wonderful time putting together these gift bags because the bag was set there and then all of their supplies. We talked about what it took to take care of a baby and not just monetary things, but also the things we need emotionally as children of God or as an infant to, um, to grow. And so these are the gift bags that each one of the students put together. And we've got other things coming up that we're going to. Awesome. And if you want to stop by and see the room, we're having it in our Sunday school class. Kind of keep everybody contained. <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful example of doing good, not just, not just not doing harm, is extending gifts of love to new parents with no benefit to us. Right, and um, we marched ourselves in here because we thought that Pastor Ben could say a prayer, and that prayer could go into the child. And that's what we're going to do. But it won't just be my words of prayer. It'll be our collective prayers together. During the pastoral prayer here in just a minute, I'll invite you, whether it is an extension of a hand or just your extension of your hearts, to join me in blessing these gifts that as they go and touch the lives of new parents, can very recently attest to are very tumultuous and challenging. And small gifts of love go a long way. As we come to sharing in our our prayers, our joys and concerns, uh, I would invite you to hold in your prayers, all of those listed on the back of the bulletin. I would add into your prayers, uh, especially Betty Medley. Uh, Betty had surgery on... um, on Friday, and uh, I forgot what day of the week it was for just a minute, on Friday, and she was supposed to go home that day, and they decided to keep her overnight, and they have dismissed her now, right? She's still there? They're holding her another day. So invite your prayers 
as a, a relatively minor surgery, but they're just keeping a little close eye on her. She's in Newton Hospital, and if you would send her um, encouragement via text or calls, she's got her phone with her, so I'd invite you to do that. Any other joys or concerns? Amy Unruh, one of the pharmacy techs that works along with Sherry in the summers, her father has come down with COVID and alongside a long list of other respiratory diseases, it sounds like, uh, is not doing well. And so prayers for him and for Amy as, uh, as the whole. I was, um, I was reading a story about, uh, from a nurse who was talking about two 15-year-olds that, uh, that she'd seen lost to COVID here about a week ago. And that is an enduring mental image. Um, it is so easy, I think, and so maybe, in fact, desirable to try to make the losses of, uh, from COVID faceless. And yet, I don't know a single person who has not lost someone, either in their family or their friends or their friends' friends from this disease. And for me, it is not a faceless, it is not a faceless tragedy at all. Um, when I think about the ways in which we protect and love each other as Christian sisters and brothers, I picture you. I picture you the people I want to protect, the people I love, and the people I don't want um, to not see anymore. Both hold within us the joy of new life and the concerns of life ended too soon. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and heavenly God, you who have formed all of the stars of the sky and made us, shaped us out of the dust of the earth, you who have given us name and purpose and by the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have saved us, rescued us from our own wanderings and fear and mended us by the gift of your Holy Spirit. We praise your name, and in the joy and prayer of our hearts, we lift to you all that we have and all that we are and all that we can do to serve you in this life. God, we praise you. Experienced with us daily, new doors which open, new opportunities, new awarenesses and realizations that free us from the chains that bind us and by the mercy of your Son enable us to live more, a more fulfilled, more gracious, more loving life. Especially, O oh God, we give you praise for the gift of new life for babies, daughters and sons known to you and new to us, for their parents, young and old. We pray all of our blessings upon these gifts, that as they touch the lives of those who are experiencing the joy and the questions and the sleeplessness and the excitement of new life, that you, O oh God, would touch their hearts with comfort, with care, 
with reassurance and with love that their actions as parents might help to build up children full of love and hope. Surround all of us, O oh God, and surround these gifts that they might be gifts of love experienced as hope incarnate for those who are dwelling within this gift of new life. For those who are sick, that by the from the illness and pain that affects our mind and body and spirit, and for all who experience this pain. God, grant your healing power and your love. Be with us all. Free us from the walls that we build around ourselves. And by your strength and courage, your guidance and your mercy, move us into people whose words and actions speak boldly of your power and your graciousness through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. All of these prayers the ones that we can share and the ones that we have not yet found the words to share. We know that you hear us, all of it. We know that you love us entirely. We know that you answer our prayers by the mercy of Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. In celebration for all of the gifts that God has given to us and for the ways in which we are called forth to work, I invite you to stand and join in our docs. in this prayer of thanksgiving. Your love has created us, O oh Lord. We, we praise you for, for the purpose and hope you have given, given us. Your love has saved us, O oh Lord. Send, Send us, us out, out as, as messengers, messengers of, of Christ's, Christ's love. love. Your love sustains us each day, O oh Lord. Created, created called, claimed, claimed, your love is, is never, never ending. ending. United in heart and purpose, let us pray together the way that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the and power, power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. As you remain standing, I invite you to join in our closing hymn, Make Me a Servant.
as you go this week, know that each soul you encounter is being drawn to Christ by the love of God. May your actions, may your words, be part of the song that brings them home. May you go forth in the power and love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.